Okay, time for another video. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about work, power, and energy. So these words are uh, words that we use in everyday life, of course, and now we're going to come up with the physics definition of them and uh, some calculations also. So uh, today it's work and power that we'll be talking about. And uh, the thing to remember, I guess, or a good starting point, is that work from a physics standpoint uh, is force and distance. So it's a force supplied over a distance. A force by itself is not work. There has to be some kind of movement. So you could push a rock all day long, uh, like this statue is, and you're not doing any work unless you're moving the rock. Uh, so work is force and then multiplied by distance. Okay, so uh, we'll start off with the unit for work, and that is the joule. You may remember the joule from chemistry, uh, and now we're uh, also applying it to physics here. So let's start off and see what we got here. Here's an example uh, of a force and a distance, two concepts that we're very familiar with. And uh, we're going to see how much work is done in moving the car across the parking lot. Uh, okay, have you ever done that? Have you ever had to push a car across the parking lot? Uh, my advice would be uh, to put it in neutral. Makes it a lot easier to do that. Um, so, uh, let's see how you do. Give it a shot and, um, and see what you come up with. And when you come back, I'll show you my solution. Okay, so here we go. Of course, we identify the information and then we go ahead and plug it into our equation. So W is the symbol for work. We've already mentioned that joule is the unit, so it's just a matter of multiplying the force by the distance, and in this case 525 joules is the answer. How did you do? Now hopefully it makes some sense to you. Alright, the joule. This is a new unit for us, the joule. Well, you know, you might have seen it in chemistry, as I said, but for physics it's a new unit. <clears throat> and it is a derived unit. If we multiplied newtons by meters, we would get newton meters, let's say. But newtons multiplied by meters is the derived unit joules. And that means you must be in uh, meters and you must be in newtons in order to get an answer that comes out in joules. Okay, um, can you think of any other derived units that we have used in this class? Well, one is the Newton, right? The Newton itself was derived out of some other base units, right? And, uh, yeah, so what are the units that we used to get the Newton? <clears throat> well, the Newton was a force, a mass multiplied by acceleration, so the Newton involved kilograms, meters, and seconds. So the joule is also based on kilograms, meters, and seconds. So it's the joule uh, uses the newton as well. Okay, right, and F is equal to ma. It was uh, mass in kilograms multiplied by meters per second squared. So you can see how kilograms, meters, and seconds uh, show up in the newton. Okay, so here's another thing to think about, and um, maybe makes a little bit of sense too, right? When you're lifting an object, the force you supply is the weight of the object. Uh, they even call it lifting weights, right? So the force uh, required is the weight of the object. Here's a person lifting a car inside a house. Oh, that's pretty amazing. All right, so let's see. We know that weight is mg, which is the mass in kilograms, multiplied by g, the acceleration due to gravity. So how about this? Here's an example for you. And uh, why don't you give that a try? See if it works out for you. And when you come back, I'll give you the answers and the solution. Okay, well, back again. Hopefully that worked out for you. And uh, let's see what we would do. First step, of course, is identifying the information. So there's the mass and the distance. And since the force is the weight, you are going to multiply that force, uh, that mass rather, 500 kilograms by 9.8. So the force is 4,900 newtons, and when you multiply the force times the distance, you get 4.9 times 10 to the fourth, or 49,000. You can see here I'm using the scientific notation, um, which I've been throwing into some of our uh, calculations for a little while now, right? The scientific notation. Here's a quick review of scientific notation, right? What do we do here? 1250. Do you know what that would be in scientific notation? 
Well, typically for scientific notation, we put one uh, digit and then the decimal point. So we would uh, come up here with 1.25 times 10 to the third. And the other way around also, right? What would we uh, have in long form here? 3.75 times 10 to the fifth. Well, what this means is, because it's a positive 5, move the decimal place 5 places to the left. So can you picture it? Or 5 places to the right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should use it correctly. So 375,000 is the answer. You're not required to put answers in scientific notation, but since it's a science class, not too bad to talk about scientific notation. Okay, so uh, here's another concept with this work business. Uh, the force and the distance uh, have to be in the same direction. All right, well, let's see how that's going to come out for uh, problems like uh, ours. Here is a, a staircase, and a staircase is not a ladder, so a staircase is going to uh, cover distance horizontally and vertically. I guess a ladder does also. But <clears throat> remember, the force is upward, right? Remember, like the force that you're going to supply in lifting something is in the upward direction. In a way, you're like the normal force at that point. But your force is upward, and that means that the only distance that matters is the vertical distance in the staircase. The horizontal distance does not matter. So when you carry something up a staircase, it's the upward direction. <clears throat> and as I said again, uh, that means that um, only the vertical distance matters, which you'll see on the next slide. What do you think about this staircase, huh? It's pretty inventive. Staircase. Probably not so good if uh, you got babies, though. Toddlers trying to crawl up those stairs. You would want a staircase more like this one. That's a little safer. All right. So it's only the upward or vertical direction that matters. <clears throat> and uh, there's no force in the horizontal direction. So that distance uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. All right, so here is an example, given that idea. And uh, here I give you the horizontal distance and I give you the vertical uh, distance, right? And the point on this is that the uh, horizontal distance doesn't matter. So force times distance, it's only the vertical distance, the 15 meters that matter. People always try to do inventive things. Uh, find out the distance by using the Pythagorean theorem, make a right angle triangle. None of that matters. It's a little easier than that. Just toss out the horizontal distance and use the vertical distance and you'll be quite all right. All right, so in this case, 150 joules uh, worth of work and uh, hopefully that concept makes some sense. Okay, now power. You know, we talk about power uh, in different ways and power is really how fast you're doing the work. So if we can both do a thousand joules worth of work, well, we've done an equal amount of work, but as far as power, it's the one of us that would do the work faster that is generating more power. So power is the rate at which you do work. Symbolically, power is W divided by T, work divided by time. All right, so here's an example for you, and the question is how much work was done? And you can give that a try. That's a little review of the work concept. And when you come back, I'll give you the answer. Welcome back. There's the answer. That's 7,500. <clears throat> and then as a follow-up question, how much power was used? So why don't you give that a try? And when you come back, I'll give you the answer. Okay, now you're back. And the answer for the power is 187.5. W's. Now, there's a lot of W's. We have a W for work, and now here the unit is double, W as well. Any idea what the unit for power is? Something you might have heard before. What is the unit for power? What is the unit for power? It's not a question, it's a statement. W is for watts. Watts is the unit for power. Watts are derived from joules and seconds. Joules divided by seconds gives you watts. So once we're back to relying on the joule to get the derived unit of watt, and the joule was derived from the unit, uh, newtons, uh, and that comes back to um, kilograms, meters, and seconds. So everything's wrapped up in the kilograms, the meters, and the seconds.
Okay, here's my solution for that. Maybe you saw my answers and you didn't quite understand it. So here's the step-by-step -step for you. Here I've identified the information that I was given and I found the work by multiplying the force multiplied by the distance. That's where I got the 7,500 or 7.5 times 10 to the third joules. And then here is the power calculation. Power is the work divided by the time. So there's my 7,500 divided by my time, the 40 and 187.5 watts is the answer to that one. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Of course, uh, if it doesn't, you'll, I would hope, bring questions back to class and we can talk about them there. All right, how about this? I've been saying watts, and I'm sure you're probably pretty familiar with them, but um, how about watts? Have you heard of watts before? Where have you heard of watts before? Well, most people come up with the answer of the light bulb. You know, you are given the power rating of your light bulb in watts, and the more watts you have, the brighter the light bulb is in general anyway. Uh, so that's something. Uh, another thing here uh, that you might not be as familiar with is paying for electricity. You probably don't have to do that yet, right? But uh, we are billed in kilowatt hours. Kilowatts is a thousand watts. A watt is pretty small when we're talking about the electricity that we use in our house. But uh, kilowatts and also the more time we use them. So the kilowatts multiplied by the hours is uh, how they bill us. And we'll do something with that a little later in class. Okay, well, here's James Watt, and that was his time period, 1736 to 1819. So there's the guy. They named the uh, unit the Watt after. And um, do you know what he's uh, famous for, James Watt? Well, what he did was he perfected the steam engine. 1763, think about that, 26, 27 years old, and he did something that really changed the world there, right? So you're young and you think, well, you know, you got to wait and wait a while until you can start changing the world. I don't think so. I think you're ready to do it now. All right, well, there's James Watt, and like I said, the steam engine, he perfected it. He didn't invent it, but he, he perfected it. And uh, the first thing they used the steam engine for was taking things out of the ground, uh, you know, for uh, water or uh, digging for other things in the ground. And uh, that was the first use of the steam engine. But very quickly, once they perfected it, uh, the steam engine really changed the world. And one of the big things there was uh, the idea of transportation. First, it was steamboats, because steam can power things, right? Uh, you know, work is, uh, you need energy to do work, and the energy uh, is generated from the steam, moving a turbine moving things around, or moving a wheel of the boat, I guess I should say here. But uh, yeah, steamboats, you know. If you notice, um, before we figured out all this stuff, uh, your major cities would be built on a river, so you could move things in and move them out, or maybe by uh, also by the uh, ocean, right, by the shore, because boats could get you goods and and move things, supplies in that you need. Now, you have to, but you had to worry about going upstream or going downstream. But with a steamboat, it really opened things up. And that was a nice advancement, <clears throat> but not as big as the, uh, let's see here, not as big as the steam locomotives. Because now you don't have to worry anymore about going where the river is. You can lay those tracks anywhere in the world. And that was a big, big changer uh, in the world. Big cultural impact there, um, being able to go... Um, really anywhere you could put the uh, put the railroad, railroad tracks. Of course, now we would use highways a little bit more, but we still use the railways for moving a lot of things around the country. And this got into the culture pretty quickly. I'm a big fan of Disney and uh, Mickey Mouse, but uh, yeah, Mickey Mouse's first movie was Steamboat Willie, so it got into the cultural consciousness pretty quickly. <clears throat> the steam engine did. And uh, do you know where uh, they finally connected the east and the west, uh, the railroad tracks, where you were able to go by railroad car uh, all the way from the east coast to the west coast? You would think maybe it'd be somewhere in the middle, but if you think about it, they have so many more big mountains out west. So it was Utah, Promontory Point, Utah, was the point where they came together. And uh, the world was never quite the same. Um, today we're so synced up with time. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we know to the second where we are, and everybody's on the same time scale, uh, pretty much, especially with our smartphones. 
Um, but it wasn't always that way. You know, what does it matter? It would take so long to get to East Brunswick from here or, uh, you know, uh, so what would it matter if our time was off from them? But once you have the locomotives coming through, now you got to stick on a schedule. So they started calling it railroad time and uh, standard time, where everybody was agreeing what the time was. That way you could catch your train, right? Or people would know when to pick you up. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, not too long ago that that all happened. Okay, uh, this is, does anybody know who that is? Do you know who that is? Well, that is John Henry, and you heard the story of John Henry. Well, the story of John Henry was he was a uh, he was he was working on the railroads, and he would drive the uh, stakes in to lay down the railroad track, and uh, that was a pretty pretty good way of doing things. Pretty hard work, of course, but um, at some point they came up with a, a tool that would do it that was steam driven, steam driver there, and uh, they said, well, you know, this is going to be better than uh, people. but uh, And the story goes that there was a race, John Henry versus the steam driver. And in the end, John Henry won, but then he died. He collapsed. That's an interesting story, an American fable, I suppose. But how about this? Besides the battle of one man, John Henry versus one machine, what do you think the significance of that story is? Well, why, does it, uh, why is it a part of our culture? Well, this has been going on probably from John Henry's day on to our day, and that is the idea of machines taking over jobs, you know. Uh, if you're feeding your family by driving uh, stakes into railroad ties and now a machine takes your place, or one machine can do the work of 20 men, uh, that's going to change people's lives, and that's been going on for a while. Can you think of other examples of this happening? Well... I guess an obvious one is the assembly line, right? Assembly lines and factories, and uh, more and more uh, jobs are becoming mechanized, right? Maybe someday you'll uh, robots will be doing most of our work, right? Who knows? But computers and assembly lines, and this is now uh, pretty much the way uh, humanity works. But it wasn't too long ago where most of it was done by animal power or human power or maybe water power. But uh, we've found out some other things since then, haven't we? Okay, so um, here's uh, an example to finish up our talk on work and power. Um, so see how you do with that one. And when you come up, I'll come, come back, I'll give you my answers and my solutions, and we'll finish off this video. Okay, welcome back. See how you did. My answer was, well, there was my work, 7,840 joules, and the power, 522.7 watts. So how did you do with that? Well, here's my explanation of how it works. There we go. There's my mass. I'm first identifying my information. And, of course, then I have to realize that mass is not force. So here I am making the conversion to weight. So the force is 392 newtons. And that's where I got the 7,840 joules. So there's my work. And... There is my power, taking the work and dividing it by the time. All right, so hope that made some sense to you. And uh, if you didn't understand what was going on, please bring your questions back to class. And I uh, look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching. Whoa!